Today we're talking about banded rudderfish, and as some people might know them as, amberines or amberinis, something like that. These fish look like uh, a small amberjack. You know, there's several fish that kind of look like that. Lesser amberjack, greater amberjack, amberines, aka banded rudderfish. We don't catch a lot of these fish, but on this past trip, we had uh, just these banded rudderfish. They just swarmed us. I mean, they were like hitting our baits. We were dropping three hook rigs down for vermilions. And man, they just hit them on the way down. They destroyed our rigs. But we caught a lot in the process. They're actually a really fun fish to catch. They're kind of schooled up. They actually came to the back of our boat, followed our baits up, kind of like mahi. And just you put a bait in the water, and they're just fighting each other to get your bait. It's an ideal fishing situation when the fish are fighting each other to get your baits. Now, uh, one easy way to distinguish a banded rudder fish is that they have white on the tips of their tail. So if you're not sure if it's a small amberjack or some other type of jack, um, check the tail and you'll see those little white tips right on the tail and that tells you this is a banded rudder fish. I have no idea how they got the name banded rudder fish. So the question we had was, are banded rudder fish good to eat? I don't hear a lot about them. We usually avoid them um, just cause you know, we usually have like wahoo and mahi and trigger fish and that's kind of our preferred fish. So we catch fish like amberjack and uh, these um, banded rudder fish. We often throw them back um, just cause we don't need them. Try to take only what we need. But it was a slow trip and we caught these fish and yeah, I'm just kind of thinking, hey, are banded rudder fish good to eat? You know, what would it taste like compared to say a trigger fish? So let's show you how we fillet these banded rudder fish. Then we're gonna cook them up and tell you how they compare to fish like trigger fish. All right guys, this is a banded rudder fish. We're gonna do him pretty much the, the same. Probably a little more yield on a rudder, banded rudder than they are on the others. And what I do is I, I'm gonna cut down the bone here like this. I'm gonna show you one going from the front to the back is one way and then we're gonna go from the back to the front and show you a different way. So we got them like that. So we're cutting right, right down here, right down that back bone. Coming out like that. And then we just want to run around that. There we go. There we go. Now what I'll do, is that big line of bone structure there. The rib bones. What is that? Well, those are out of, out of play right there. Now, before I cut those, I'm gonna cut this and go ahead and take it off the meat, off the skin. So I go like this. All right. So see if you if you don't get it enough. See how this is not really uh, skin. It's just that little gristle in between it. So it kind of leaves that on there. If, if you tilt your knife up a little better, we'll do, let's do this one, see if it's a little bit better. So I'm gonna come up on this one. Okay. See the difference? Mm -hmm. Now, on this one, as you notice the difference in the color of the meat on this one? It's a darker meat fish. See the bloodline right here? So what we'll do is we'll go down here. Now we're gonna get the we're gonna get the bloodline and the bone structure out at once. A little bit of bloodline here, kind of like a little tuna or something. Cut that, that red meat bloodline out. There you go. There you go. That's one, one play. Let's do this other side now. I got still got a little bit of that red in there. Let's see, got a knife and cut it like that. Come right across the, the play like that. You want to get this just a slight bit right here in the middle. And a little bit of skin left right here, you see? Take this and go at an angle. And if you look on the side, 
See that bud line is wide here, but how it narrows down at the backbone. So you don't you don't have to cut a big section out. You just cut it at an angle. And then when you knife, you, you'll feel the knife actually hit that bone. And just, once you hit that, get to the bone, just kind of cut straight down on that. And you see, that got it all a little bit bud line at the top. See that chunk? If you want to take that tiny bit, you probably wouldn't ever taste this. It's really kind of thin, but you just take that knife and screw it over there like that. And that is gone. There you go. Now, we talked about doing this. Hey, and if you don't get a good fillet, check this out, guys. You can go down and catch your little bit thing right there and make you some sushi. A little thin piece like that. And put whatever you stuff you want to put in it, you know. This like here, this is a much smaller piece. It's closer to the rib cage. Let me get that last little piece out here. Hear that bone? There you go. Check this out. So we got all this up. Now, guys, on this um, all this fish guts and all, we have a garden out right behind me, and we use that for fertilizer. This is the way going front to back now. Now this one right here, what I'm doing is I'm just following the top of the back and the belly. I'm just cutting straight forward on it, guys. I'm gonna right up here. I get to here, I'm gonna take the knife. Come across like this. Cutting that out, check this out. There again, like I said, guys, if you, if you like sushi, you get a very thin, see there's not even enough to get on this one. But you can cut that out. Now I'll take this and put it in my gut pocket. Take this right here. I'll get this little rib cage out. Like so. Do that way. Now, I'm going on there and keep it same way with this line. Now, see I had that, that little flat back of red right there. If I want to get that, I'm just coming along here. It's that center. Cut it out like that. I'm going to trim it up just a little bit more. There we go. Check this out, guys. Fully ready to go. Turn around this guy right here. By the way, guys, you guys that like to um, fish with cut bait, this stuff makes really good cut bait. Your uh, leftovers, the belly of that fish, especially the tuna. For trigger fish, it's really tough. And you can have a bait down there for about two or three fish on there. Right now, I'm going to turn this up just a little bit higher and see if we eliminate that red line. See the red line still here? I took most of it out now. Take it right here, cut it right to there. We get right to that backbone. Put it down like that. Turn on to this side. Get it right here, get that backbone. Go straight down. You can't quite get that blood line out of there, or bone out of there. There we go. Okay. Little nugget and you have this one right here so my dad got them all filleted up and we took them in and we fried them this is the same recipe we use when we fried up trigger fish great all-round frying recipe okay frying fish is really pretty simple so we fried them up and we compared them I did a little taste test between trigger fish and banded rudder fish fried up the same way and they actually both tasted equally well flavor wise I couldn't tell a difference now, the difference I could notice was simply the texture of the fish. Um, kind of to my surprise, the trigger fish was really soft. I mean, you kind of bit into it, and it was it was firm, but it just, you know, it had a really soft, um, kind of, I want to say melt-in-your-mouth texture. The bannon rudder fish was good, still tender, but it was a firmer meat, like the whole filet held together well. 
So it was just that texture that was different. Otherwise, I really like both fish equally well. You know, I definitely eat banded rubber fish again. And depending on what your recipe needs, you know, depending how depth, you know, how in depth of a cook you are, you know, how far you want to go. Some recipes where you want a nice firmer piece of meat, maybe you're doing like um, a fish sandwich and you don't want something that's just going to fall to pieces, that banded rudder fish would be a great option. Overall, it was pretty cool, fun fish to catch. They don't get as big as their big brothers like amberjacks, but they are pretty neat to catch. And you can even do it on light tackle and uh, have a great time. You know, the way they school, it makes it pretty exciting when they all come around the boat. If you guys have any other suggestions about how to cook banded rudder fish, by all means, let us know. Thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.